ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, so you guys know what that mean means, okay? We have another tale that's coming from the Pissy Pied Piper. So what's going down is this. If you guys remember the other day, I did a video about R. Kelly trying to petition the courts to allow him to go to Dubai. They said that R. Kelly was booked out there for several concerts. He needs to be able to go out there and make some money so he can pay his legal bills, he can pay his child support and all that stuff. Well, now Dubai is now speaking out, okay? And Dubai is saying, uh, no, try again, boo-boo. We did not grant grant you permission to come to our country and to come perform and all this other stuff. So it's getting really, really crazy with this situation. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip. I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. After filing a five page motion seeking permission for R. Kelly to travel to Dubai, Kelly's attorney asked for a continuance. In the filing, the attorney stated that Kelly cannot find work in the U.S. because of the criminal charges against him. Today, he says offers are pouring in. He wants to renegotiate the Dubai deal and provide more information for the judge. The request is continued until May 7th. R. Kelly surrendered his passport in February when prosecutors charged him with sexually abusing a woman and three girls. The court filing states Kelly is booked to do five shows in Dubai and is supposed to meet with the royal family. The motion argues Kelly has lost his record deal and no longer owns the rights to his hit songs. He needs to work to pay child support, rent, legal fees and other expenses. Kelly spent three nights in Cook County Jail after failing to come up with $100,000 for his release in February. A friend posted bond. About two weeks later, Kelly ended up back in jail after he could not come up with $161,000 in child support. The United Arab Emirates does not have an extradition treaty with the U.S. World leaders and celebrities on the run have gone to Dubai. Joining Kelly's defense team is an entertainment attorney. He says Kelly has 300 songs in his archives and is ready to work. This file contains a bunch of emails, probably about 150 emails that we just pulled off an email server that Robert's gotten in the last month and a half of offers to perform in just every place possible you could think on the planet. This is a big deal. You know, some big acquisitions. And Mr. Kelly, um, had declared his innocence in the United States, but you're innocent to prove guilty. But, you know, when you um, are accused of something, it weighs heavy on you. So he's uh, anxiously to, anxious to um, prove his innocence. You know, and he was depressed at first, but right now, you know, he's getting back to things he loves, basketball, uh, music. Once he gets past that, he's ready for trial. Kelly's lawyers argue that the singer will not be a flight risk. Kelly was allowed to travel overseas ahead of his 2008 child porn trial. His lawyers point out that he never missed a court date. So this is what Dubai is saying about the situation. Go ahead and check this out. So Dubai's government on Sunday forcefully denied a claim that R&B singer R. Kelly, the artist that had planned concerts in the Sheikdom, after he had sought permission from an Illinois judge to travel there despite facing sexual abuse charges. In a rare statement, the government's Dubai media office also denied claims by his lawyer in court that Kelly had plans to meet with Sheikdom, ruling the al Kamantum family. Authorities in Dubai have not received any requests for performance by singer R. Kelly, nor are there any venues that have been booked, the statement said. It added that Kelly had not been invited by the Dubai royal family for a performance. So that is the news that leaked this weekend. So of course, R. Kelly's attorney, Stephen Greenberg, he definitely had a rebuttal about the situation. I'm gonna go ahead and read to you guys what Stephen Greenberg had to say. Go ahead and check this out. So Stephen Greenberg took to Twitter and he says this, hashtag R. Kelly has a contract with a legitimate promoter. Any information included in this motion to travel was for that contract. A copy was provided to the prosecutor and the contract requires that he make himself available to meet with the royal family and was for performances in Dubai.
<laughs> All right, so that's what R. Kelly's lawyer is saying. He's saying they have the documents and everything else. And you know what? Honestly, I believe what he's saying because why would he put his neck on the line for damn R. Kelly and bring the courts, you know, fraudulent documents? I think at this point in time, the Dubai government, they're just trying to save themselves the embarrassment. They don't want the backlash. They're not going to take an L for R. Kelly. And they know that if they allow R. Kelly into their country to perform, being that this is becoming worldwide news, it could fuck up their tourism. And they're not going to lose no money over no black man from Chicago. So I don't believe the government when they said that, you know, they had no idea and R. Kelly, you know, was not approved to come. Why would the lawyer petition the courts? I mean, the courts had to go through the documents and make sure everything was legitimate. So I do believe that R. Kelly was booked to perform. But now that that's been made national news, worldwide news, they're trying to distance themselves from R. Kelly. Just like the other countries who had initially invited him to come perform. Once that became worldwide news and people, you know, there was a lot of outrage and a bunch of mute R. Kelly people going off, those same countries also distanced themselves. So I think that that's what's going on in Dubai. R. Kelly is definitely not on the same status as a Roman Polanski. You know, they, they will look out for their own one when their own fuck up. But them Arabs are not going to look out for some black man from Chicago. They're not going to take that L. And that's just me keeping it all the way real, okay? So now in other breaking news, honey, everywhere you look, everywhere you look, it's a scam of somebody who needs their ass whooped. All right, y'all, I had to sing that song again. I don't know what is going on with 2019. When I tell you 2019 is the year of the scam artist, this shit is crazy, okay? If you guys don't know, it is breaking news all over. That lawyer, Michael Avenatti, has just been arrested. He's been charged with two severe counts of fraud and extortion to the Nike corporations. He has a charge in New York. He also has a charge in LA. For y'all who don't know who Michael Avenatti is, he's one of the lawyers um, representing one of the R. Kelly victims, okay? And so that's how he's tied into this whole situation. He's always tweeting shit about R. Kelly, always calling R. Kelly out on Twitter, and now he's being blasted, okay? And on top of that, he was also seen as a hero to CNN, honey. You couldn't tell CNN shit. Michael Avenatti was this smoking gun during the whole Stormy Daniels situation with Trump. So they really held Michael Avenatti to a high, you know, to a high standard. And when I tell you CNN is looking hella depressed right now, okay? So all this tea just got spilled about, you know, 40 minutes ago. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a news clip concerning Michael Avenatti. Check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Let's continue on. Uh, top of the hour, you're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Uh, we continue with this breaking news regarding attorney Michael Avenatti, who has represented adult film star Stormy Daniels and that whole hush money scandal involving the president. Uh, he has now been charged. He, Michael Avenatti, has been charged with extortion, uh, bank fraud, and wire fraud. So prosecutors in both New York and California uh, announcing these charges moments ago. Keep in mind, these are two totally separate cases. All of this coming down on him today. Uh, New York prosecutors first announced Avenatti had been arrested uh, this morning on charges related to this alleged $20 million scheme to extort Nike. And then moments later, federal prosecutors in California announced the bank and wire fraud charges. The federal criminal complaint charges Mr. Avenatti with wire fraud and bank fraud and contains a series of allegations that paint an ugly picture of lawless conduct and greed. On his Twitter account, Mr. Avenatti describes himself as, quote, attorney, advocate, fighter for good, unquote. But the allegations in this case describe something different, a corrupt lawyer who instead fights for his own selfish interests by misappropriating close to a million dollars that rightfully belonged to one of his clients. All right, so standing by for a legal analysis, I've got Renato Mariotti, CNN legal analyst. But Nick Watt, let me start with you there in, uh, in Los Angeles. So you heard from the uh, U.S. attorney there. Uh, talk to me about the charges he faces in California specifically. Well, Brooke, we have learned a lot more about those charges within the past hour. We were told by that U.S. attorney that the maximum statutory sentence for all the charges Avenatti is facing in this case, that would be 55 zero years in jail. Now, of course, that attorney and the IRS investigator were asked about the timing of this arrest. Now, the arrest warrant was issued on Friday, the same day that the Mueller report dropped. They were asked, is there a connection? The answer, an adamant 
No. They say that this investigation into Michael Avenatti began way back in 2015, and it was a tax payroll investigation, which in 2017 became criminal. Now, the allegations against him are that he lied uh, to try and get more than $4 million in loans from a bank for his various commercial entities, that he also lied to an IRS agent, and that he, in fact, didn't file any personal tax uh, returns at all for three years, while at the same time lying to this bank about how much he had paid in tax. Now, the other string to this bow is the fact that allegedly Michael Avenatti won a settlement back in 2017 for a client he was representing in a intellectual property case. He won a settlement of $1.6 million. He then apparently showed that client a falsified settlement document which said that the money would be paid in March 2018. In fact, these prosecutors allege Avenatti got $1.6 million in January of 2018, and he used that money, which rightfully belonged to his client, he used a lot of that money for his own personal and business expenses. Now, the IRS investigator called that. It, he said it is difficult to imagine a greater betrayal of trust. So those are the charges that Michael Avenatti is facing here in California. But as you say, Brooke, two different investigations that were apparently unrelated, but they do concede that they did coordinate between mm -hmm. the two investigations in order to arrest Michael Avenatti in New York today. Brooke. Nick Watt, thank you for the story in California. As for the story in the next case in uh, New York, we just listened to the U.S. Attorney Jeff Berman a moment ago from the Southern District of New York detailing um, what, 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 what charges now, what, what they dug up on Michael Avenatti, what he's, was, what he's charged uh, with. And so this is all tied, Renato, to this extortion plot against Nike. Uh, take a listen. Through the alleged course of conduct, Avenatti used legal terms like claims, and settlements and retainers, but these were mere devices to provide cover for Avenatti's extortionate demands for a massive payday for himself. By engaging in the conduct alleged in the complaint, Avenatti was not acting as an attorney. A suit and tie doesn't mask the fact that, at its core, this was an old-fashioned shakedown. So, Renato, here's my first question. Out of Mr. Berman's mouth, uh, saying that this was the, what, the first line out of his mouth, this is not aggressive advocacy, perhaps anticipating what Michael Avenatti's defense may be. How effective, though, might that defense actually be, and how, how, how much of a slam dunk is this case? Well, the Southern District of New York case is not a slam dunk. In fact, there is a very difficult legal line between aggressively negotiating to get a settlement and extortion. Now, Mr. Avenatti appears to have crossed that line if the allegations uh, that were made by the Southern District of New York are accurate. And really, to me, the turning point there is that he seems to be seeking um, uh, money for himself for this investigation that he was going to be doing, as opposed to really seeking anything for his client uh, that would be, help, you know, focusing on what his client would want. But it is often the case that in a negotiation, there's going to be, you know, about claims, there's going to be very aggressive tactics that are used, mm. and courts are very reluctant to characterize that as uh, extortion. I, I'll use, for example, Jeff Bezos uh, went online, the, 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 uh, the founder of Amazon, and talked about how you know, he had these negotiations with the parent company of, of National Enquirer. And I said publicly, I didn't think that that was criminal. But here, uh, Mr. Avenatti has crossed the line, but there, there's definitely a defense there. The other case that we just heard about in California, not so much. Well, hang on. Let me go. So, so the New York case, when I was listening to, to Jeff Berman detailing at the point where clearly, according to the complaint, one of the Nike lawyers was wearing the wire and gets all this, you know, we'll call it colorful language from, from Mr. Avenatti. Uh, Michael Avenatti at one point just says, OK, just pay me twenty two point five million and I'll just ride off into the sunset. If you're Michael Avenatti, how do you defend yourself? What you would have to say is that somehow, you know, you, you, there was a claim against Nike and you were trying, you know, this was going to end up, um, uh, you know, resolving that in some way. The problem for Mr. Avenatti uh, is that that doesn't appear to be strongly related to a claim. In other words, what, what typically you have is a settlement negotiation where you're representing a client that has a claim 
and then you were trying to get money for that client. And you could be aggressive and say your client's going to go public uh, mm -hmm. and is ab about to go public or file a complaint tomorrow unless you pay X amount of dollars. But here it seems very much from the conversations like Mr. Avenatti's focus on enriching himself. But Mr. Avenatti, at least in court with in front of a jury, would be able to argue that it was an aggressive negotiation. He's a lawyer. He has, I think, an argument to make there. And that, I think, is very stands in stark contrast to the other case that, that you just spoke okay. about earlier. In California. Honey, this entire situation is a hot damn mess. When I tell you I was not expecting this damn twist and turn, okay? This R. Kelly situation is getting crazier. America's just getting damn crazy. So now on top of Michael Avenatti being arrested, shit is getting real. If you go onto Twitter right now, there's all types of things trending. One, release the Mueller report. Um, Michael Avenatti is trending. Nike is trending. And it's now also being announced that Mark Garagos, okay? Yes, famed attorney Mark Garagos, they're trying to implement him now and say he was a co-conspirator in all of this stuff with Michael Avenatti. Mark Garagos, he represented Michael Jackson during the 2003 sexual abuse allegation trial. He's also represented Chris Brown. And right now, this is the same man that Jesse Street Meat, Smollett, also hired to basically represent him during this whole fiasco that took place in Chicago. So the rabbit hole is getting really deep with this situation. I don't know, this is just weird to me because think about this. Nike boosted up Colin Kaepernick, okay? And Mark Garakos is representing Colin Kaepernick to go against the NFL, you know, to basically sue them for lost wages and all this stuff that they put him through, right? And then in the same breath, they're taking down Michael Avenatti and they're tying Mark Garagos to this whole little scheme. I don't know if y'all follow what I'm trying to say. Um, it's probably getting jumbled. I keep it with a lot of information. Even if I don't report on stuff, I know a lot of shit. So I just find it really, really crazy that not only is Michael Avenatti being arrested and charged, you know, with bank fraud, wiretapping, all this stuff, right? But now they're trying to attach Mark Garagos to it. And these are two of the biggest attorneys in the country. And they fight a lot of celebrity cases and everything else. So I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to fall back, honey, sip my damn tea and watch how all this shit plays out. I don't know if this is a conspiracy to take down these men or if these men are involved in some fuck shit. What I do know is that CNN was heavily promoting both of these men on their platform. Um, Mark Garagos does not contribute for CNN any longer, but I remember seeing him on there a lot of times as well. So I don't know, y'all. This whole situation is crazy. Okay, so I have another update. So if you guys do not know, as of two hours ago, Michael Avenatti was released on $300,000 bail. And so he's speaking about this. Um, he's finally talking. He's not taking any questions. But I think he might be onto something. I think my conspiracy might be kind of right that, you know, there's some people behind trying to take him down and he kind of speaks on this. So y'all go ahead and check this out. It just got posted online. I'm going to make a brief statement, but I will not be accepting any questions. First of all, I want to thank the federal agents for their professionalism and courtesy today. They were outstanding throughout the process, and I wish to thank them for everything they did today in connection with this matter. As all of you know, for the entirety of my career, I have fought against the powerful, powerful people and powerful corporations. I will never stop fighting that good fight. I am highly confident that when all of the evidence is laid bare in connection with these cases, when it is all known, when due process occurs, that I will be fully exonerated and justice will be done. Thank you. So on top of him being bonded out, it's also being reported by several outlets. I'm um, like Black Sports Online. They're stating that if you read the full indictment, it shows how lawyer Michael Avenatti tried to extort Nike for $20 million and how Nike was able to also capture Avenatti admitting that 90% of the accusations against R. Kelly are bullshit. And these are in court documents. So like I said before, this rabbit hole goes deep. So it seems like there's several conspiracies wrapped into one. I don't know what to think as of now, but this is just the information that I have thus far. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. 
once again concerning the Pissy Pied Piper not being allowed to go to Dubai and then breaking news today that Michael Avenatti being arrested on some serious charges and now as of 10 minutes ago more breaking news that's time Mark Garagos who's involved with Jesse Smollett's you know his whole uh, situation now they're trying to take him down as well so I don't know y'all but the rabbit hole definitely goes deep it's gonna be very very interesting to see how all this stuff plays out when I tell you 2019 is a year of the damn scammers it really is okay anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning the Pissy Pie Piper, Dubai basically distancing themselves from him, but his lawyer showing paperwork and stating that no, he did have permission to go to Dubai. And then last but not least, how do you guys feel about the whole Michael Avenatti situation and him being charged today, breaking news? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.